the centre of this mayor unit? Here you are, Captain Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Fred Astaire. Mr. Peacock, this is following on close behind with Ginger Rogers. <laughs> and don't let me catch you dancing cheek to cheek. <laughs> Just pull the trousers up, Harmon. We'll be having customers here in a minute. I'm sorry, uh, Captain Peacock. Only Mr Ladlow's just been giving his works a quick tweak with the screwdriver. I'm afraid we've had a few technical problems. Um, one does have these uh, teething troubles, you know. It's a very sophisticated piece of equipment. Doesn't look very sophisticated with its trousers down. <laughs> <laughs> have I missed something? This is one of the automated display units for the new uh, dress hire department. It's ten thousand pounds worth of equipment here. Fancy. Yes. <laughs> Captain Peacock, I do hope that I'm not late. I notice that the customers are already coming in. Oh, good morning, sir. Can, are you being served? <laughs> Braces, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Explain to him, Mr. Humphreys. Is that it? Is that the robot they thought we making a fuss about? Don't look very lifelike to me. Oh, well, you don't look very lifelike at this time of the morning. Come to that. <laughs> It's that robot they've all been going on about. Well, it looks just like all the other models. What does it do that's different? <laughs> well, that's different. I hope that's not going to be a common occurrence. <laughs> oh, she's got plenty of nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Mr. Lucas. Yes, we do. Yes, Captain Peacock. Semi-clad models are not permitted on the floor. I'm sorry, Captain Peacock. <laughs> Miss Barnes, adjust the costume on that model. Will you please remove your hands? There uh, speaks a voice of experience. <laughs> Scores opening. Are these things going to function or are they just going to stand there all day? Just about ready, sir. Now, I've programmed them for a very simple first manoeuvre. Now, he's going to salute, like that, and she's going to curtsy, uh, just to acknowledge him. You know, people really seldom curtsy in these days. My milkman does. <laughs> you should stop answering the door in your tiara. <laughs> You've been there early, have you? <laughs> Uh, would you like to do the honours, sir? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> well, what do I do? Now, now, just press button three. The information is already in the memory. Right, here we go, then. Uh, before I do press button three, I think it's worth pointing out that in so doing, I'm opening up a new era for Grace Brothers, the era of automated display. <laughs> to borrow the words of the first man on the moon, a small step for man, a giant step for mankind. <laughs> Well, it's not easy to take a giant step with your trousers round your ankles. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, you did actually press button eight with the thumb of your left hand as you were preparing to press button three with the forefinger of your right. So it received the wrong signal. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does button eight always result in the lowering of the trousers in that manner? Well, yes, it's to help make a speedy change of clothes. Well, if you ask me, we could all do with one of those. <laughs> Can you imagine leaping out of bed and shouting, I'm late, I'm late, I must press button eight. <laughs> right, ready to go again? Before I do press button three, I think it's worth pointing out... Excuse me, sir. You've done that. Mm. Oh. Ready? Yes, ready. Ready? Yes, quite ready. Oh, get on with it. The suspense is killing us. <laughs> he looks a bit nervous. Perhaps he's worried about his trousers. <laughs> well, I've said the signal. Mm -hmm. I think he's got the message. <laughs> My pussy saw that it'd be straight up the curtain. <laughs> Press it again. <laughs> it would seem that something has gone wrong. You can't expect the curtsy after he's treated her like that. <laughs> Here we are. Here's a sugar. Who wants what? Well, I prefer brown. Well, I'll give you some at this end where the gravy went in. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum? I'd like two big ones. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley? Not for me, thanks. It's fat me. Yeah, yeah, have one of these. It's saccharin. Oh, I didn't know you were on a diet. Mm, I have to hold back. <laughs> I had a dinner party last night. Oh, was it a special occasion? Well, it was to show off my new electric log fire. It's got, it's got one of those revolving discs that puff out electric smoke. It's not quite pretty, is it? <laughs> what did you give them? Canelled halibut. <laughs> What's canelled? Well, it's a very refined way of doing fish. Mm, you chop it up very, very small until it's a smooth paste. Fancy you going to all that trouble. Oh, well, I wasn't going to, but I slipped when I came out the fishmongers and trod it. Where are you going for coffee? Ah, oh, we wondered where you were, Stephen. I was having a sandwich in the boardroom. <laughs> a sandwich in the boardroom? Young yeah, Mr. Grace said for uh, Mr. Rumbo and myself to ask our advice about the Golden Shoes competition. Golden Shoes competition? What's that? 
It's a national contest among department stores to find the champion ballroom team. Mm, last year, Derry and Tom's were at the floor with us. Well, what's it got to do with you? Well, uh, young Mr. Grace wants our ladies and gentlemen's department to form a team this year. Yes. Uh, six years ago, I was in the team that reached the quarterfinals. I was in uh, soft furnishings and fabrics at that time, if you remember. Oh, yes. You were a legend. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> what is more important is that we have hidden talent lurking in our midst. Now, we've been looking through Mr. Humphrey's records. I was innocent of the charge. It was a case of <laughs> And it appears that at one time he was um, an instructor in the Twinkle Toes Dance Salon in Western Supermare. <laughs> oh, now, that is muck raking. <laughs> and before that, at the age of eight, he was a sunshine babe. <laughs> oh, it's just like being on This Is Your Life. <laughs> a sunshine babe. What did you do? I'll show you. How do you please me? <laughs> Big smile and make up your eyes with laughter. The folks will be laughing with you. Hey! hey. <laughs> you know, I saw them. They had fringes and little short frogs. Mm, that's what gave me mother the idea. <laughs> Young Mr. Grace feels that uh, Mr. Humphreys could be, as it were, the trainer. Well, what about the rest of us? There's more than two in a team. Well, at the Christmas party, Mrs. Slocum, you revealed that you were very light on your feet. She was very light in the head as well. <laughs> You're getting cheeky again, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lucas, I believe, was uh, a frequent visitor to the Palais de Dance. Oh, no, I don't go there for the dancing, though. I only go there for the chatting. Mm, he got chucked out the other night. What for? He tried to sneak in on the under-25s night. <laughs> How did you know that? I was there. <laughs> anyway, young Mr. Grace is very anxious that we should compete and uh, promote the dress hire department by wearing their costumes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, not me. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Knowing that we have to do a lot of work... He is prepared to pay us a bonus of £25 each. Oh, of course, that was a little complex on the whole thing. I'm very fond of ballroom dancing, you know. I'm not good at it, but I'm very fond of it. And I shall inform young Mr. Grace that I have your full cooperation. Don't you want the piano for I cut in pink? Oh, Mr. Rumble, where would you like the piano? Then? Oh, there will do very well, thank you. The piano department said if it ain't back by nine o'clock tomorrow morning, it's down to you. <laughs> I have written permission from Mr. Widgery. That's typical, isn't it? Take what you know, so you know. Right, pay attention, Clark. Now, this evening, the first thing we're going to do is... Mr. Rumble! Mr. Rumble! Not while I'm instructing, please. Now, the first thing this evening we're going to do is to brush up on our quick step. Hands up, who doesn't know how to do the quick step? I don't. Oh, what do you do when you go dancing? The funky chicken. <laughs> I'll put you down as isolation freestyle. <laughs> He's that the one that goes... <laughs> it's hard to tell the way you do it. Well, I, I do hope it's that one because I do that very well. I think perhaps, Mr. Humphreys, we'd better start at the beginning. Yes. Shall you and I show them? Yes, I think that'd be best. Shall I lead? <laughs> I'll lead. Take your partners. No, just, just, just a minute. I think that as I know something about it, and as Mr. Granger knows something about it, we ought to take Mr. Lucas and Miss Brahms. Yes, yeah, good idea. <laughs> Fate has thrown us together at last, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> Bell top and you'll learn something. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Directing the traffic? <laughs> Now, you will note that Captain Peacock's hand is in the small of my back. Hands in the small of the lady's back. This would be wrong. And this... Mm -hmm. <laughs> this would also be wrong. <laughs> what happens if your arm won't stretch that far? If I have any more of your lip, I shall tread on your two. <laughs> shall we show them just the first basic steps? Yeah. Ready for the music? <laughs> <laughs> Take your time from me. Slow, slow, a quick, quick slow. <laughs> Ready for the fish tail? <laughs> you have a very positive lead, Captain Peacock. <laughs> Ask him if he's three on Thursday. <laughs> I think that was rather too complicated. Uh, yes, perhaps we, we ought to start with the uh, foxtrot. Good idea. Any questions? Yes. How is the piano playing? <laughs> Adequate, Mr. Rumble. <clears throat> well, if you think you could do any better... <laughs> I think with the uh, slower tempo of the foxtrot, harmonies like these would be would fall more easily on the air. Thank 
you, Captain Peacock, but I still prefer my version. <laughs> as you will. <laughs> Dancing so well and playing the piano as you do, I'm quite surprised to find you working in a store. Playing the piano as you do, I'm not at all surprised. To find you. <laughs> Please, please, please. <coughs> Shall we try the first part with the first couple? Mr. Slocum, are you ready? Quite ready. Hand in the small of the back, Mr. Lucas. I can't find the small of her back. <laughs> I can find the big of her back, but I can't find the small of her back. Ron <laughs> <laughs> Sousa. Now, please. One, two, three, four. <laughs> so close. I am not dancing close. She's dancing close. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum feels that you're taking advantage of her. <laughs> that is not the case, Captain Peacock. I hold the back of her out there, but the front of her finishes up here. <laughs> well, do the best you can. <laughs> Very well. I shall ask Mr. Rumbold to make an adverse entry in your record. I'm terribly sorry, Captain Peacock. I didn't realise it was that serious. I'm, I'm truly sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm huffed. Let somebody else have a go. Yeah, it's a good idea. Now try the next couple, Mr. Humphreys. Mr. Granger. He's dropped off. The excitement, <laughs> the excitement was too much for me. Wake him up, Mr. Humphreys. <coughs> Mr. Granger. Anyway, then, uh, I'm just serving Prince Philip. <laughs> You'll find the sleeves will ride up with where your highness should. <laughs> Mr. Granger, are you free? Yes, I'm free. Take off others for the foxtrot. Oh, yes. Oh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Mr. Granger, you've left your engine running. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not quite sure where to start. <laughs> We saw your difficulty. <laughs> but mind you, I'm, I'm excellent once I do get started. The competition might not last that long. <laughs> you, you know, my, my father always said, play a good game of tennis and a good game of bridge and learn to dance well, and you can mix with all the crowned heads of Europe. And did you? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I had B.O. <laughs> Fragrant memory to look back on. <laughs> well, let's try it all together, shall we? Everybody? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Damn! Try next time round. <laughs> Brown Boat here. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Gay. The dancing. Oh, he went very well, sir. We put in three hours over time last night, and I think we have a team with a chance. Good. Well, I, I shan't put them on unless I think they're good, you know. Uh, oh, by the way, Rambo, aren't you dancing? I I'm on the piano, sir. I once saw Fred Astaire dancing on the piano, you know. Uh, looked to me very dangerous. <laughs> uh, no, sir. I'm on the keyboard. <laughs> oh, I, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> think of your great big feet all over their keyboard. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Uh, no, sir. My hands are on the keyboard. Really? Dancing with your hands on the keyboard. <laughs> Even Fred Astaire couldn't do that. <laughs> but he did once dance on the ceiling. Perhaps I should start again, sir. And uh, there it is your receipt, sir. Thank you very much. You're a good one, sir. Men's wear. <laughs> Hello, Leslie, dear. <laughs> it's the higher stock room. They want our sizes. What for? For our suits, for the competition. Hang on a minute, Leslie, love. Mr. Granger, do you know your vital statistics? I've had no interest in them since I lost sight of my toes. <laughs> Hang on, Leslie, and I'll hand you over to our Mr. Lucas. Uh, this is right up your street. <laughs> What's he like? Well, he's so 
I'm 60-ish, baldish, fattish, and I limp. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's a girl. <laughs> what did you expect? Ready, Mr. Granger? Stand by. Stand by, Leslie. Head. Head. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Neck. Neck. Sixteen. Sixteen. Chest. Chest. Forty-two. Forty-two. Waist. Waist. Forty-two. Forty-two. <laughs> Hips. Hips. Forty-two. Forty-two. <laughs> Inside leg. Inside leg. Thirty-one. Foot. <laughs> Shall we serve again with new ball? <laughs> Are you going to be much longer? I think I've got it right now, sir. Now, I've designed a very simple program. He will raise his hat and do a courtly bow, and she will nod to show her appreciation. And if all that works, I shall program them to do a little dance together. Uh, this should be good. We work very, very hard on this one. Uh, would you like to do it, sir? Well, uh, perhaps Mrs. Snooker would like the honour. <laughs> oh, I'm not very good with mechanical things. Though I did once hit the jackpot on the pier at Blackpool. You did you? I once hit the jackpot under the pier at Blackpool. <laughs> Sit up, Mr. Howard. Now, just press button one for the hat raising, two for the bow, and four for the nod to show appreciation. <laughs> well, you're just like the Queen launching a big battleship. <laughs> uh, happy days. <laughs> Here goes. Well, Joe, I think you've got it right this time. Yeah. Got a bit of rheumatism in the arm. It's the weather that does it, you know. <laughs> two for the bow. <laughs> She's showing everything else. <laughs> Here, I just remembered it wasn't Blackpool, it was Yarmouth. <laughs> I'm putting on my top hat, tying up my white tie, answering my mail. Rumble's here. Um, hat dancing. Oh, uh, going very well, Mr. Great. Um, we're just getting ready for the dress rehearsal. Oh, good. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll come down. I'm on my way. Uh, well, I, I don't think we'll actually be ready for another ten minutes, sir. Don't worry about that. It'll take me as long as that to get to the lips. some slight mistake over my dress suit. <laughs> What's my name? Would you believe Stan Laurel? <laughs> uh, ready, look, Captain Peacock. I'm just complaining about my suit, sir. Oh, don't fuss, Peacock. It'll be put right in the morning. We've always got one or two adjustments to be made. In my case, they'll need to build an annex. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. Mr. Granger, you look very smart. Thank you very much. I feel quite romantic. <laughs> Well, the clothes should be all right. I understand they're bankrupt stock from a theatrical costumier. Ah, then this is Stan Laurels. <laughs> I've got uh, the name Michael Wilding in mind. I, I think they must have let it out a bit. <laughs> it's a bit, bit spooky about this suit, you know. The pockets are full of birdseed. And this hat smells like it's had a rabbit sleeping in it. <laughs> Don't exaggerate, Mr. Lucas. I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation. You're quite right, Mr. Rumble. The rabbit has been sleeping in it. <laughs> I wore this when I won the golden pumps for the gay god. Is it light up in the dark? Yes, it is. Oh, Joe, not pulled this in at the back. Oh, yeah, I'll let it out in the front. <laughs> What's that bolt in your pocket? It's a chicken. Mrs. Slocum, and then we can start. She couldn't get in the lift. <laughs> Are they anywhere near the end? <laughs> Just keep walking, we'll tell you when. I'm not coming down until somebody gives me a hand. <coughs> Michael Wilding, Anna Neagle needs your assistance. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Granger. Hello, me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Brown. Oh. Will you tell her? 
Will you tell her or shall I? You haven't seen yet, huh? Mrs. Slocum. Uh, we'd, uh, we'd better get on our feet. Young Mr. Grace will be down in a minute. What's he going to see first? Well, if you don't get up, no hands, two knees, and a lot of bumps a day. So... <laughs> And we'll show you the, uh, the freestyle formation first, I think, sir. Now, line up, everybody. <laughs> May I ask you a question? Of course, sir. Is your head getting bigger, people? <laughs> no, sir, it, it's, uh, it's an optical illusion created by my hat. <laughs> you ready, Mr. Rumbold? Ready. Right. Over to you, Mr. Humphrey. Uh, one, two, three, four. Sir. Well, it's the shadows just about <laughs> to at the end there. <laughs> well, they're from here, sir. They're the automated display units. I see. Well, order four more and send your silly lot home. <laughs> 